I'm Farmer Steve. This is Turner Family Farms weekly CSA box crop description and some culinary ideas. How do I look? You look great. Oh, no, don't answer that. <laughs> okay, let's see. This week in the box, we have what do I? Arugula. Um, arugula is a Nebraska family. It's this is I got this out of my own freezer. You get it fresh every day, so it's just been. It's just been harvested when you get it. Uh, arugula is roquette. It's uh, spicy brassica. Everybody loves it. Put it in. I you can you can sauté it a little bit. Um, you can put it in a salad mix if you like things spicy. This one is not super spicy. We will have salad mix this week, so you can put it in the salad mix. That's what I would do with it. You can also just cut it. Um, Easiest thing, easiest way to do that if you want to wash these, if you get stuff in bunches, you want to wash them, okay? And I just dip them because I'm going to cut that piece off anyway. So I'll go to the sink, dip it, uh, come back, and that's my, you know, that's it right there. Um, I know the French say to tear the leaves because it's better that way or whatever. I don't do that. Uh, sometimes, maybe a little bit. So add that to your mix or saute it. And you can mix it in with some of these other things that are, that's, that are coming in the box. We're going to have kale. So these are some of the things you can mix it with. I'm going to start with this one. This is uh, La Sonata kale. They call it dinosaur kale, as you can see. That's what they think di dinosaur skin looks like. I guess it could have been called elephant kale. Uh, it's an, I guess technically it's Italian. This is a unique one. And if you get one, that's, that's this, this, this one right here has a little bit bigger leaves in it. You can actually make... Uh, wraps with this. Uh, this one is my favorite taste wise, but you, it's also sturdy enough and big enough that you could uh, you could put something in there. Um, it could be meat, it could be vegetables, whatever that are that are uh, sauteed, whatever, just put it in there and fold it over into a wrap. So that's a good idea with that. <clears throat> These are awesome. I think it's the best tasting one. You just even the, the rib isn't that bad, but you want to get rid of the rib. I have a tool coming for that, by the way, for the members. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really cool herb and, and like kale rib stripper. Be a few weeks for that, but I have a whole bunch of them coming. <clears throat> um, that's the La Sonato kale. And this is a regular green kale. Um, same thing, brassica, same family. This is what everybody knows, it's just regular old green kale. It's, it's crazy good for you, of course. Um, and same thing, you can eat both of these raw. I do it all the time, but in a bit of a saute is good with some seasoning, salt, pepper, some garlic. Uh, we're gonna get around to growing garlic next year too, because I love garlic. Um, so there's that one, and there's another one that we have in the field. I don't know if I'm going to pick it tomorrow for tomorrow's box, or Thursday, Friday's box or not, but it's a Red Russian. And those are the three that, that we grow. We still have, we're going to have uh, this chard for, for a few weeks, and actually there's going to be a little bit of a gap in the harvest, and then we're going to have it as long as it'll take the heat. Uh, this one is called uh, Ruby Red. It's a real nice variety. It grows and grows and grows. This, this batch here started as a baby mix and now we're all the way up to full size. I got three or four cuttings out of it as baby greens and now they're they're full size chart. Um, <clears throat> when you get these in the box, if it's wilted, it's these amaranths. This is a different family. This is in the same family as beets and spinach and all, all of the amaranths have more pores for transpiration. So when we harvest it, we have to actually take, sometimes we'll take ice water in our totes and when we make the things, we stick it down in there or we should be doing that. And that keeps them from wilting. You can freshen them up by doing the same thing. Just like flowers, cut the, you know, cut that off, put it in some water in the refrigerator and they will come back up. But I know sometimes people get them and, and you know, during the day of delivery, they're gonna wilt a little bit. That's just the way this one is, uh, just by its physiology. Uh, that's a good one, I love that one. Same thing with that, throw that in with the, if you wanna saute all those things, uh, mildly, not a lot. None of this stuff is so fresh 
that I wouldn't certainly wouldn't be cooking it like you know old school collards or anything. Just a real subtle saute. It'd be a good thing for the for all of these. The chard, the kales, um, the arugula, and so <clears throat> that's what we do with that. Let's see what else have we got. Beets. Um, I've got some here, and again, these aren't. This isn't the prettiest batch because this is from last. This is from my own refrigerator. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna have regular beets that are separate from. Be this is what we call beets with tops. Again, an amaranth. So in the refrigerator, it kind of dries out, gets that that sort of wilty kind of look. Not quite as bad as the as the char does, but uh, you know a little bit. And what you want to do, you don't. The reason that we do this is that we want you to be able to use all of it. So I go ahead and add that to the, uh, to, the, um, to the chard because they are very closely related. So that'll give you a little color, you know, with the chard. It's same plant family, same everything. And again, saute. Uh, one little trick that I like to do um, if I'm doing idiot proof or farmer proof, uh, uh, say chicken thighs and I'm roasting them in, in a roast pan. When they come out, they've rendered out, you know, fat, all the, the fat and whatnot, and I just throw uh, the greens, these kind of greens in there with it, stir it around and just roast it very lightly. And it picks up the fat, picks up the seasoning, all the rest. The beets, uh, these are small. Now I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna have some bigger ones that are more storage beets to go with them but they're supposed to be like that. Okay, so the chefs love these things and they serve them um, really that way. You can do, these are these are pretty small, maybe we want them a little bit bigger than this, like this is a pretty good one here. And they actually serve them like that. And you can, you say you're sauteing something in the pan, you know, put it in the pan um, to deglaze, like that. That's, that's what you want to do with those. Uh, I have another beet thing I'm going to show you here shortly that's really cool. Spring onions are here. Uh, my, the, my favorite thing to do with spring onions is just, just grill them. Uh, salt, uh, olive oil, salt, pepper. Um, use the whole thing. I mean, I don't, I don't typically use the top. I may throw that out just, just to make it a little neater. <coughs> um, you can use all of this, you know. And of course, the, the white part you can use how you normally would. Uh, that's a great, great in salad, raw, as long as you cut it up a little bit. But boy, when you grill these things, they are, they're fabulous. And same thing there. Say if you got, if you got some that are bigger and you're going to go to grill them, <coughs> you can give yourself a little more surface area by cutting them open. I love them with butter, but olive oil, um, any kind of good olive oil is good. Just grill them real quick and they are it's amazing. They caramelize, they're a little sweet, they're really good. Really, really, really good. <clears throat> Yellowstone. This has been a really nice surprise. Um, this is a, it's a carrot that comes from Johnny's. It's called Yellowstone and it grows really well around here. And I've, I've had some really nice compliments on this. Uh, carrots are all root vegetables when they come out of the ground fresh are so much better. Um, if, you see, if you haven't seen the other video on uh, carrot top pesto and processing some of this stuff, we're going to put a link right back to the other ones or just go back. It's only three of them now. <coughs> um, we make a pesto with this. You can add that onion. Uh, one of our members, Jacqueline, for last week, it was that night, sent me a, some pictures and, and of, of a roast that she made and of the pesto. And she used, she actually blanched this a little bit. I, I don't do that, but, but you, it's a good idea. It'll make it a little milder. Um, and she used the onion in it, and you'll see the rest of the, the way. I think she said she used walnuts. Um, any of that's good. Go to that video. It's a good one. You can, you can skip around and figure out how to do that. Uh, <coughs> roast these. Uh, also, in that other video, it shows you uh, go ahead and process the tops. Get the tops off when you get them because the tops uh, take the moisture and nutrients out of the carrots themselves. Okay, but we leave them on there so you know they're fresh. If they got those tops on them, you know they're fresh.
we're going to be doing these these microgreens. These are these are broccoli. Um, we mix them. It's a it's a broccoli mix with a little bit of a brassica mustard in it, and there's a health reason for doing that. They even almost always include it in the mix for that reason. Those two together is a, I actually have a blog post and website gets back up. We can link over to that as to health benefits and an explanation as to as to why that works together. Um, so basically, you know, we just cut them and that's what you get. And if you've never had microgreens before, it is like whatever flavor that you're expecting times 10 and the same with the nutrients. And a lot of times we mix them. If you, if you find something unusual, it looks like that in the salad mix. A lot of times we put it right in the salad mix. We will put, I put some fennel um, tops just a little bit in last week's salad mix. So um, those of you, if you're wondering what that is, that's what it is. If you hate it, let me know. Um, most people really like it. It's something, something interesting, something fresh. Let me see, I have a cool, recipe I'm going to show you in a minute something I've already done um, it was I called uh, Dean Neff has been helping us with some of this stuff I don't know if you know who he is he's uh, he was the executive chef at Penpoint and he's working on a new restaurant downtown he's kind of our local go-to guy really great guy uh, his wife is Lydia uh, from Love Lydia's the bakery <laughs> um, let's see Dean has us doing a salt doming our beets and I went ahead and did it to our sweet potatoes too but I don't know what it's like yet we're gonna find out here in a few minutes um, let me see I want to want to thank the members want to thank Jacqueline for the um, the ideas on the pesto and Melissa uh, we've got we've got a lot of people in that neighborhood now and I want to thank everybody for the referrals that's just means a lot I mean it's like Oh, yes, flowers. Everybody got flowers. We'll be getting flowers from time to time, and that's, that's Castle Hain. That's the Dutchman. Love those guys. It's uh, Mark and Edwin at uh, Castle Hain Farms. Those guys are, you should go out there sometime when all this pandemic stuff is over and check it out. They'll show you around. It's amazing. It's a, you don't realize what's in your back, you know, in the in the neighborhood here in the, in, in the area they ship stuff all over the world they, he's got patents on his plants it's a really cool place and they help they're just so nice they help with all kinds of stuff really really cool guys so that's where the flowers are coming from uh, they're just kind of giving them to me to give to you um, Dave Borkowski of uh, Changing Ways uh, this is where the egg option comes from for the box Dave's got a whole bunch of birds, and he's real good. He's real good with this. His eggs are beautiful. I eat them all the time. Uh, so far, everybody's been really happy with them. Dave does a nice job with everything he does. Meats too. If you wanna, if you wanna um, look him up, changing ways. Uh, Dave Borkowski. I, we'll, we can add a link there uh, in the description too. Um, that's it, I think. Oh, I'm gonna show you this salt dome thing. Uh, <clears throat> Let me see. I took out this. The idea here is I have salt domed rockfish before, like raw fish, and it's really amazing. And I went to the food line. This was early on and uh, before the, the pandemic kind of stuff, and I wasn't able to get enough salt. So on the way out of the store, <laughs> I happened to see salt crystals that, that uh, come from it, it's a water softener for us rednecks out here that have to they're on wells that use these water softeners and it's just salt so there's no reason not to use it this uh, is a little stained because I've been reusing it there's no reason not to keep it's good salt yeah it, throw it away. It, it's a rock you know it's like Alvin Brown says it's a rock it doesn't care but what you do is you put herbs in it Okay, um, I, in this case, I put uh, some, I put actually cinnamon sticks and mint and some rosemary, just whatever I had. And I roast it, I, like just layer it. 
Um, I put salt, the, the salt mix on the bottom. No egg. That's something that you do with some real salt dome fish kind of stuff. You don't want, you don't need to do that because um, you'd be breaking through this, and it does get stiff a little bit. But 325. I think I did this whole thing for maybe an hour. It's got uh, beets on top, sweet potatoes on the bottom. I haven't touched it, so I have no idea. I did this with the beets one, and it was the it's absolutely amazing. So since then, I have made myself this old beat up uh, pot here is dedicated to salt. Uh, one thing that is amazing is it's not salty. It doesn't come out salty. It's more of an insulator and it, everything's really juicy and the texture of the beets is amazing. I'm going to pick a few out here and show you what they look like and then I'm going to dump it. Uh, and it's hard, to, it, it, it's hard to explain the texture and these were just little ones. Bigger ones would be even better. What you want to do is get them and wash them real quick because they that gets what salts on the outside off. And check this out. I'm gonna put it. It's it's hard to explain what they're like. They're almost like gelatin, and it's just so good. And they're better. I mean, well, yeah, they're better cold than they are hot. Here, Ed, give that a shot. Let me look at this real quick. Yeah, it, it, it's they're they're it's, it's almost like real like hard gelatin, not hard exactly, but they are yeah. just fabulous, and they're infused with whatever herb you put in the in the well, salt. Give me, give me a shot. All right, you're gonna don't, remember you're gonna get red beet juice all over you. Remember that later too. It's good. Uh, it's crazy. What yeah, it's it almost like, does taste like herbs, it's too. it's almost like uh, candied, but it's not you know it's not sugary. It, yeah. Um, like if you're chewing through a candied orange thing or whatever, it's amazing. Yeah, it's not like it's not like salty like you would think. You just put the whole thing inside mm. the full salt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really it's really pleasant. It's mm. good. It's good. So um, the one thing that we did learn about doing this is you don't want to cut them. You just want to clean them. Uh, a little bit and that keeps the salt out of it if you get in there and you try and trim it up too much and you expose the inside they will be salty but they really are not are not so I'm gonna try here and see if we get the same effect see if we get the same effect from this sweep to Oh yeah, look at that. That it's it's fully cooked. Oh man. That's pretty cool. You gotta give that a shot. So my vegan friend here can do the Mmm. Asian good. Hey. Yeah, amazing. Great. That's a different texture. So that's the salt dome story. Um, it's really cool. It's unusual way of doing things. Give it a try when you get a chance. I've used, I've done this a couple times. This is why this looks like that. Use the salt real white, but it's inexpensive, um, and I keep I keep the salt on hand. And after three or four uses, I may throw it out. Um, the smell is amazing. Yeah. When you've got sweet potatoes going in that thing, and it's got, you know, I did mint and um, cinnamon sticks and that sort of thing, and it was just, it's amazing. So that's that. Um, that's the last little trick for the day. Uh, I think that's all. We will have a salad mix in tomorrow's, um, in tomorrow's box that's not here, and there may be some other surprises. So keep that in mind. Thanks to everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, anybody that sees this and wants to sign up, right now you have to call me. It's 910-463-0305 uh, until we get the website and everything back, back up and running, um, which won't be too long. It'll be about two weeks. And we're going to put all this information below. Does that help your point? Yeah, your point. <coughs> and that's it for this week. And thank you, everybody. Thank you.